Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost and I'm an Airtable and Zapier consultant. In this video, we're going to be building a slightly intermediate uh, level Zap using Airtable as a trigger. And what we want to have accomplished is we have an example CRM kind of built up here in Airtable where we're tracking our contacts as well as the interactions that we have with them. And what we want to do is set it up so that we can effectively uh, write an email directly in Airtable, record that email and record that interaction and then have it send that email automatically so that we don't have to manually go into our you know, email server and, uh, and send that ourselves. So we're going to be building a Zap to do exactly that so that we can just talk to our contacts directly from our Airtable CRM. So without further ado, let's jump on in. All right, so as I mentioned, we are going to be building a more, slightly more complex Zap in Zapier, uh, which is an automation tool that links up very nicely with Airtable. Now, I already have my Airtable talking with Zapier because I've already connected it through the API. If you haven't done that and if you need help, I do have another video and I'll include a description or a link to that video below. Uh, but for this video, I'm going to assume that you're already connected and we're moving forward from there. So we're going to create a new Zap. Let's jump on in. We've got uh, make a zap up here, which we will grab. And what we're doing is we're using Airtable as the trigger, right? So the trigger is that action or that, that step that needs to happen in order for the zap to fire, right? And so we're gonna go ahead and select Airtable here. And when you select Airtable, you'll see that you have two different types of Airtable triggers. We've got a new record, and we've got a new record in a view. So a new record is just anytime there's a new record in a table, a new record is created, this is going to fire. But since we have a slightly, situ uh, slightly situational uh, you know, uh, trigger here, we only want this to fire when we create an email, but we could have a lot of different other types of contact with folks in our CRM. Phone calls, for example, Zoom consultations, all, all, a bunch of different things. So we're going to want to specify a specific type of um, record and we're going to name that record or we're going to choose that record by going new record in view. So let's go ahead and click here and we're going to save and continue. Now this is a great time. As I already mentioned, we already have the uh, Airtable set up. So we're going to test that and make sure it's working. And then we're going to make sure that this is selected. All right. So now this is a great time where we want to go back into Airtable and set up a, an actual example in our CRM so that we can pull that data into Zapier and have it plugging into this uh, example while we build this. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's our base. As I mentioned, it's really simple. We've got a contacts table. And so this is just taking a first name and a last name. The name of the contact is the full name, which is just you know a combination of the first and last name. We're going to track email. We're going to track phone number. And it's linked to interactions so that every time we have an interaction with somebody on this table, it is going to be recorded here. And of course, that's going to link to multiple records because we're going to have multiple interactions. All right, so checking out interactions, we've got a unique interaction ID, we've got a type of interaction, and this is where I was discussing we can do phone calls, Zoom calls, in-person or email. Um, this is the contact that we're interacting with. This is the created on date, which will populate automatically when we create a new record. And this is where we would include the email body if we wanted to have an email body here. Now there are a couple more pieces that we're gonna need to pull in in order to get this to work just right. So first of all, even though we have that email information over here, we're going to need to bring that into the interaction because the Zapier integration is going to be looking at the interactions table for information. So it needs all the record data that it needs to do its automation needs to live in this table too. But that's an easy fix. So we can go ahead and pull in the email just like this using a lookup field. We're going to grab the lookup based on the contact and we're going to bring in that email address. So now that email address, once we link a contact to this table, it's going to automatically populate right here. Now the other thing we're probably going to want if we're writing an email is the first name. So we're going to do a lookup here and bring in the first name of the contact as well. So let me show you what this would look like. So let's suppose then uh, that I, you know, if you go back to contacts, I'm just have my example data in here. And so uh, if I were to create a new record here, you see the created on date is the first thing that populates. 
That happens automatically. Once I connect a contact here, we are going to then uh, bring in those other pieces of data. So here is that email address and here is that first name. You might notice that I'm also uh, bringing in some data over here. So this is just the contact with the date and timestamp. And so that way each of these is going to be unique. So every time we have a new, um, a new record is created, it will, this will update automatically. So what we want is to be able to write an email directly into this space, this table in this email body. And we want that to trigger to, to be our trigger for a new zap, right? So what we, the only conditions where that will be true, where we want the zap to actually send an email is when we've selected an email type and where we've written an email body. So let's write an example email body. Uh, hi, no, let's just write the body itself. Let's just say um, this is an example. And there we go. So let's see how this works. All right, so once you see Airtable saving because it's in the cloud, it takes a minute to get that all saved up. And what I'm gonna wanna do here, this is just a master grid view. You see, this is just the default view that sets up. I'm gonna actually wanna duplicate this view and we're gonna create a new view and we're gonna call it the email, uh, email template view. And if you have a pro subscription, I would strongly recommend locking any views that you use once you have them set up because this is going to be important for the integration and you don't want the view to get altered in the future. So jumping into here, what do we want to have happen? Well, only certain times are we going to want to send an email when the type is email and when the email body is not empty. We also want to make sure that the, whoops, we also want to make sure that the email is not empty. Because if it is, the zap's not going to work. Uh, we also probably want to make sure that the first name is not empty. The more that you can filter here, the better. Because if you only do one or two filters, then this zap will trigger more often. And you want to make sure that it's only triggering when you have all the data that you want in here, right? So that is, uh, I feel pretty good about this. I think this is only going to trigger when I've selected that I, it is an email when I've written an email in the body, when there is already a first name and already an email address. So those are the conditions that are gonna be required for this. And I don't ever have to look at this email template view again. I can work out of this grid view for all eternity, but this email template view is gonna be important for this zap. So here we go, we're gonna set up that zap. So back here, we're gonna choose that base, and this base is just named example. And this table is the interactions table. Now the particular view we're looking for is that email template view that we just created. So let's go ahead and jump on into this test step and let's see what that looks like. So this is all of the data that it's pulling in. This is the field, uh, the primary field for the uh, record. Here's the email body that we wanted it to see. Here is the email address. Here is the first name, all of these things. This is perfect. So let's go ahead and continue. And now we're gonna add a step. So the step we want to add is actually to send an email. So we could do that from our Gmail, or we could just use the baked in email app that uh, exists for Airtable. We're going to send an outbound email. Great. It does say, hey, just be wary. You can only do 10 emails per hour. So this is not a mass email tool, right? This is just for, you know, handcrafted individual emails. Uh, so who are we sending it to? This is going to be the email address and the subject could be whatever we want it to be. This could be um, follow up with, and then we can even bring in fields here. So I could say follow up with Gareth in this example. And here again, we're gonna type up that body. So we could say something like, just let's put a greeting out there that says, hey, and then first name. And then we could enter the body. So this is going to bring in the body of whatever we typed in our Airtable base. And then, you know, let's suppose we want it to come from ourselves. You can set that from name. I can't even spell my last name. Um, and then, you know, the reply to, if we specify an address, it'll be a different one than our own. Um, I'll just specify my own anyway. I like to be redundant like that. 
And, uh, and that's pretty much it. So let's take a look and see what this looks like. So we can go ahead and run a test email to Zapier, like so. And that should theoretically be showing up in our email. So let me go ahead and bring my email over here now that I've opened that. And here we go. This came from Gareth Pronovost. Uh, it says, follow up with Gareth. Hey Gareth, this is an example email. That's exactly what we wanted to write in there. And if we click reply, where's it gonna reply to? It's gonna reply to Gareth Pronovost at, or Gareth at GarethPronovost.com. So that's awesome. So that is exactly what, uh, what we wanted to have happen. Now, the great thing about this, because we have built this to only trigger off of a specific view, is that we can have all kinds of other contacts in here. We can say, have a phone call with someone. Uh, we could have uh, a Zoom meeting with someone. And we, we can link this with whomever we want. And the best part is, it's not going to trigger that zap. So that zap is only gonna happen when it's an email, which is exactly what we wanna have happen in the first place. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be very useful. If you did, please do give this video a thumbs up. And if you don't wanna miss out on future Airtable and Zapier uh, content, be sure to click subscribe. If you have any unique workflows for your business that you'd like to discuss having built out for you, I will include a link in the description of this video where you can schedule a free consultation with me as well. And in the meantime, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire.